Omar, how is FSD V12 doing for you? Any additional observations? Well, it's good, but it's also bad. So, you know, as I've used it more, I've seen more of the issues pop up. It's obviously incredibly smooth, incredibly accurate, just really doing some great stuff. Also doing some strange stuff. I had a um, an example yesterday where I was up in uh, Corte Madera because we had to go to the DMV. And so we went to the DMV there and the car was driving and it had to get on the 101 South to get back to San Francisco. And it accidentally got onto the 101 North ramp. So normally it would just maybe get on the 101 North and then turn around. But it decided to turn and drive out and get back on the street going straight in the direction it was going by driving down like the area that people would use to get onto the freeway, like the on-ramp, like driving the other direction and going forward. So I was like, okay, that's, you know, obviously not the way you're supposed to drive. So it's kind of like that other move, except worse, because this was kind of, you know, going the wrong way. But, it, you know, it was kind of human in a way, like just trying to do whatever you can to get back on the route. But it was also a little bit... Uh, sketchy. So I, I think this is kind of the really interesting thing about just training on real human driving data is that you're going to pick up a lot of really good behaviors, but you may really need to curate the data set to avoid some undesirable behaviors, like doing some crazy, you know, human-like moves to get back on the route. Any There's a situation there in it. Or can later. Uh, so... You posted an interesting uh, paper from Abacus, uh, Omar's, or sorry, Omar, I don't know why I called you Omar's. Um, and in there, they, they kind of show how, you know, the industry in general, there's a lot of other papers going in the same direction of using direct or directed or whatever you want to call it, policy optimization or whatever other fancy words everybody's using, preference, et cetera. This approach is more applicable to Tesla than just the pure human observation approach. So I know oftentimes it's easy to say like, oh, it looks like they're just looking at what humans are doing. And so the vehicle's gonna have a hard time maybe doing more directed policy stuff, but they can detect the direction of the road. They can say, if you go the wrong way on the road, you get negative 100 points, etc. cetera. So uh, there are a lot of direct policies that they can start enforcing, including things like if you detect a stop sign and you didn't hit zero, minus 50 points so it's kind of like a gamification and they can go in there and they can directly give exact points based on what they want to steer the model towards and then they can let the rest of the space be discovered based on human observation so i think it's just that might be one of the things that they're trying to like finalize get all the policies that NHTSA requires all the like really strong safety things that they may have observed in and this is kind of like heuristics but it's more on the training side and once that's done in theory uh, you shouldn't see that kind of stuff happening anymore. So I, I don't think it'll be as hard as it seems at first. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how hard it will be or won't be. I don't necessarily think it's going to be hard. I'm still super happy with V12. You know, when you turn it on right away, you notice the smoothness on every drive. Like people who I've given rides to, they comment on it right away. But obviously as time goes on, I'm seeing more of those sort of more rare bugs and um i didn't necessarily see them at first but i'm saying okay there are still a couple things that's why everyone doesn't have it yet but you know i'm sure there's another build coming and that's really going to be interesting because then we'll be able to really see what the rate of improvement is maybe try and figure out what the slope of the curve is a little bit and um you know th there's issues like this to be expected when you have an early build and they say, look, this isn't ready to go out to everybody. But overall, I mean, it's obviously a breakthrough. Um, and uh, <laughs> like even what it did wasn't like wrong per se. I mean, it was probably illegal, but it was uh, it didn't hit anything. It wasn't harmful. There were no cars there. So like I 
might have done something like that if there were like no cars there, you know. So it's kind of interesting. It's you know, there's some improvements, some optimizations that need to be done, obviously, but you can really tell that um, this is a breakthrough. We'll find out what the slope is, how quickly they can fix it, but. I'm sure there's actually probably another build rolling out soon. We even saw something in Tesla scope, like a 0.13 build or something like that. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that goes out next uh, this weekend or something like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if the next build also comes with a much bigger expansion to a much wider group of testers, maybe all the early access testers or something like that. Any other questions on Meta, on V12 comments, Omar? Oh, yeah. One last thing I'll say is like, you know, so I was driving V12 yesterday and I was also taking Waymo because uh, I had to go to this WeWork location and I said, you know, I don't really want to deal with parking or whatever downtown. So I'll take a Waymo there. And, um, you know, I, I was just noticing that the end-to-end V12 is just sort of leapfrogging the Waymo driving feel in my experience. Obviously, you know, Waymo zero takeover every time. That's not what I'm experiencing with FSD 12. With FSD 12, I'm seeing it can do curb to curb, uh, no intervention a lot of the time, maybe even most of the time. Um, but there are still some takeovers, some accelerator presses in this build that I'm seeing. But with the Waymo, you're seeing like this level of jerkiness. Like, so I got in the Waymo and it was going up to the intersection and it kept stopping and going and stopping and going. And there was like a guy on the other side of the street or something maybe, or some cars coming, but it had, you know, it was perfectly clear to make a right turn. It kept stopping and going, stopping and going. And like, you can see the wheel turn. It's like jerking a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, this is like how, you know, FSD 11 would drive too in a way. And we just kind of accept it as like, okay, well, autonomous vehicles are just like that, you know, they, that's just how they are. But with V12, you're really sort of seeing them leapfrog that into an incredibly smooth and human-like feel. You don't have a lot of those sort of, you know, robotic jerking back and forth type of decision-making processes. Everything's like a much smoother gradient, if that makes any sense. Instead of slamming on the brake, you're just slowing naturally and picking up speed again in a way that's just much more comfortable. And I think it's amazing that, you know, just taking a driverless Waymo, you can actually see that they're doing something there that's resulting in a smoother driving feel, whether it's the amount of data they have or the architecture of their model or whatever, I don't know. But that's just sort of an observation I had.